Good morning, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne, First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio. Psalm 73 is an important chapter because it, it's one of those that we all deal with from time to time. If we're the people of God, why are the ungodly prospering? Why are they living in those mansions? Why are they, um, why are they, do they have better health care and they, they're, they're driving better cars? They dress nicer than we do. Why do they prosper? And you and I, who give our tithes, who serve God, um, seemingly go from paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. You know, it, it's it, in our passage today in Psalm um, uh, written by Asa. Uh, we need to look at this. It says, "Truly, God is good to Israel, to such as are pure in heart." But as for me, my feet almost stumbled. He almost gave up. He almost uh, walked away. Why? My steps nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. And then the chapter goes on, and he, he talks about how much the, these people who were anti-God. They were hypocrites. They didn't live for God and how they fared compared to other people, those who were the people of God. And he says, this almost tripped me up. You know what? I think all of us kind of go through that from time to time, don't we? There are things that we wish that we could maybe give our children or give our spouse. There are things that my wife, as a pastor's wife, you know, I would love to give to her. Uh, I can't afford to give to her. I'd love to bless her with it. It is her heart's desire. And, you know, where we are financially and where we are, you know, God provides for us. We have a beautiful home. We have beautiful children. We dress nice. But there's some things that I wish I could give to her but are, are incapable of doing so. And, uh, you know, it says here that this this... Uh, Asaph was going through the same thing. I thought things were supposed to be better when we served God. I thought we were his children and he was going to bless us. I thought that, you know, why would why would they prosper when it looks like we just continue to struggle over and over again, right? You ever been there? Of course you have. Of course you have. And so here we are, we see that Asaph, thousands of years ago was struggling with the same thing and the passage goes on and talks about all the prosperity and uh and all that was going to go through and he said that i was my feet had almost slipped and then he goes on to say um until i went into the sanctuary of god then i understood therein verse 17 all that, as long as I was taking God out of the equation, it made no sense. But once I added God to the equation, I went into the sanctuary and I heard the word of God. And I understood that that my treasures uh, are prosperity, and I'll put in quotation marks, our, 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 our reward, I should better say, is coming when we leave this earth. That this is not our home. We're simply passing through. As someone rightfully said, this is the only hell that believers will ever see, and it's the only heaven that unbelievers will ever have. This is the only heaven that unbelievers will ever experience. Now you think about that. You think about those in Hollywood with those mansions and those millions of dollars and all that. You say that's fine. But you think about that poor uh, um, Islamic uh, follower of, of Allah in some third world country who lives hand to mouth, who, who hopes they have water to drink, uh, you know, or, or, or hope they have food for their children. And the fact is, this is the only heaven that they'll ever see. They'll never make it to their paradise. They'll never get their 72 virgins. You know what? This is the only heaven that they'll ever experience. You may look around you and you may see all the prosperity uh, that other people may experience, but in truth, all that will one day burn.
And it makes no sense until we go into the house of the Lord. And then all of a sudden I understood their end. It's, it goes on to say, surely you have set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they are brought to desolation as in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors. You know what? All that's going to go away. But what we have in Christ Jesus will never go away. Let's take our eyes off of things. Off of these things that, that people of the world say matter, that they say matter so much. You know, that people give their souls for, you know. That, uh, they have to have this and they have to have that. And, and all of a sudden, we realize that it breaks down. You know, people buy cars today that cost $80,000, $90,000, $100,000. And, um, you know, and, and really what the car is supposed to do is to get us from uh, point A to point B. Nothing wrong with having a nice car. Nothing wrong with having a nice house. But you know what? If you think, if you think that that is the only uh, signs of prosperity, if you think that those are the only signs of satisfaction if you think that those are the only things that bring meaning to life you have lost it you need to get back to the house of god you need to get back to the church you need to get back under the uh, hearing of god's word because all of a sudden it brings everything into perspective that all this is going to go away their feet are on slippery places they're going to fall in the eternal hell if they don't repent of their sins and receive Jesus Christ as their Savior. It puts everything into perspective. We have Jesus, and that's enough. We have salvation, and that's enough. Let us give thanks to God for what he gives to us, rather than complain about what we don't have. Amen? Amen. This is Pastor Marvin Osborne saying God loves you, and I love you as well, and I'll talk to you soon.